I'm Captain Jason Morgan, Tulsa Fire Department, Engine 20 C Platoon. I mean, we've, we've basically got three, three positions on a truck. We've got a captain, we've got a lieutenant, we've got a firefighter. So I'm just checking the batteries, making sure we're, we're full for the day so we don't obviously run out of battery in the radios. They're important. Garrett Richardson, Firefighter Richardson, he is a probationary firefighter right now. Tulsa Fire Department, when you start out, everybody, regardless of previous experience, goes through a fire academy that's five months long. Really, I mean, you're street ready at that point. So it's kind of a little trial to get here, but 100% worth it. Um, I enjoy every day I'm here. It takes a toll, but you gotta make some sacrifices to do anything that's worth doing. Taste the hate heights. And roller coasters. But you can't really be scared of it now. Are we climbing it? It doesn't look that high. It looks pretty high. Three points of contact at all time, Garrett. Yes, sir. I mean, it's the greatest job I've ever had. And, and all I heard before I got on was, ah, dude, Tulsa Fire Department. It's the best. You'll love it. Everyone loves it. It's the best job you'll ever have. Mushrooms. That's pretty much it. Severely overweight gentleman, and he had fallen off of his bed into the floor. We basically just uh, what we use is called a mega mover. It's a big blanket, basically, with handles all the way down the side. We rolled him to his side, shoved that under him, picked him up on the blanket, set him on his bed, good to go. Some guy was laid out on the table. So, yeah, um, I hope he's all right, you know? Yeah, no, nah, like we literally just put up and we was gonna go in and saw him right there, but then saw the fire truck coming at the same time. So um, the dude who was leaving, I think saw it and he said uh, that they were coming here, so. there's. There's obviously fire trucks. There's the engine and there's ladder companies. This is a ladder, but the other one is an engine. You get some stations, you only have the engine. We're a dual company station. 
another big difference is our engine is ALS. Not every engine is. Yeah. That means advanced life support. This is a BLS ladder, meaning basic life support. So, you know, we're all EMTs. I thought you were talking about this. So on that last call we just went on, uh, mid-twenties, young uh, male, he had walked into Subway, they said he was fine, and he was going to get a drink, had a syncopal episode, which is like passing out, losing consciousness. He went ahead and uh, fell, hit his head on the soda machine whenever he was uh, there, and after that he fell down to his seat, they kind of kept him comfortable there until we got there. Really don't have an explanation of what happened, but it uh, doesn't seem like it was life-threatening at this point. Just don't have an explanation. It's luck of the draw. That's part of the beauty of the job is that you can, you, you really don't know what to plan on and you have to be flexible and you have to not let it bother you uh, because that's also the beauty of the job. Yeah. He's actually towards the tail end of his probation right now and at this time we're training so that he not only performs the job of a firefighter but he can actually drive and pump He's doing a, a pretty good job. He had a few little slip ups, but uh, he's actually not even been through the class yet. We've been training ahead of the class. A big piece of advice that I got, and I'm sure most people got it, but it was close your mouth and open your ears. And it seems like an easy thing to do, but it's not always that easy. You gotta make sure you're always sharp as a tack. You know, you never know when they're gonna need you. So you're staying ready. Um, Pretty much all the time. <laughs> I like your hair. Playing sports. I play soccer. I play soccer. Well, I Kids in particular uh, always seem to have a thing for firefighters. It's it's really actually fun to see the, the kids, their face light up. A lot of these kids, uh, it, they might as well be at Disney World. I mean, it's it's just such a. a joy to them and it, even sometimes when we're on scene for things that aren't the most desirable situations you see kids out there and they're they're looking at the truck they're just really interested they're watching us and so when we wrap up a, an incident when we have that uh, we like to make sure that they know that we are friendly that they can approach us uh, sometimes we can give them some little safety things or let them you know spray the hose or something to give them something memorable but most of us really enjoy it um, really enjoy the uh, Sometimes I think undeserved attention. Uh, these are fairly routine things. These are all part of everyday life. Um, there's some calls that are actually pretty exciting, some calls that are pretty daunting, um, that are, uh, some that are just tough. the best job in the world but there's been plenty of calls that keep me up at night in all honesty I think most of us have been to uh, counseling for certain things that we've seen and done on the job um, they'd be pretty pretty bothersome um, and that's part of it we know what we're signing on for part of the uh, curse I guess of having the desire to be in the middle of what's going on is that sometimes what's going on is is uh, is pretty horrible. I mean, there's tough stuff we deal with, but you gotta just look past it. Like you're you're here helping helping people. About three and three of them. Nobody hurt bad. None of them are needed towed. None of them are totally needed. Growing as yourself and. And the tough stuff that you deal with, you just gotta cope with it and get any help you need and, and just deal with it. But that lady in the front, she was having, she wouldn't even turn her head, her neck was hurting so bad. in all of the Tulsa fire departments that has a medical exemption for diabetes. Yeah, 
and you've been denied this job before. So I guess what kept you going? Um, partially my wife. She's a big reason because after I got let go, I was, I mean, I was mad. I was pissed off. I spent all that time. I'd quit my job. I'd started here. I was mad for probably a month. Like it seems like nothing good has happened from my diabetes. Like it is just, it's just a nuisance. It's just annoying. Like it's ruining anything and everything that I've wanted or tried to do. She's kind of brute and honest. Either shut up and get over it or do what you need to do to try again. And I was like, well, what if I spend the next six months, eight months doing what I think I need to do and then they still say no. Then I just wasted all that time. She's like, well, you're not gonna know unless you try. So, like, go for it or shut up. It's kind of one of those things where if I didn't try, I would wonder for the rest of my life, could I have gotten back in? Could I have made it work? And I got my dream job. So there are, there's calls that we were there, we tried, we see what we can do. Sometimes there's not really a lot we can. But there's plenty of calls that we can show up on people's worst day. make Tulsa better, to, to grow as a person, to help people around you grow, and to help the citizens of Tulsa. way it goes you never know what a day's gonna bring I mean I'm consider myself lucky to get to come to work as a Tulsa Fire Department and get to do something that makes me smile every day most guys that come on the jobs they want to be in the middle of the action and they have the desire to truly desire to help people and um, so when we get to do that yeah it's it's a good day mm -hmm. 